Uh, one is several of our members have to leave early for different uh, other events. Uh, secondly, uh, Rick Dreyer, one of our members, uh, father passed away this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, it's always a surprise, but uh, he'd been in uh, hospice for a few days. So, uh, and it looks like and I, this was very very tentative this morning when I talked with him, but it sounds like the funeral will be at uh, Carson Speaks. Um, then our next meeting is not on the 17th, which would be the third Thursday. It's going to be the 24th uh, for your calendars and everybody else's. And with that, um, let's do a roll call. Garland Land. Here. Jack Loney. Here. Jerry Atkins. Here. Mark McDonald. Here. Joe Zach. Here. Larry Porter. Here. Rick Dreyer. Okay, now um, we're going to pull uh, <coughs> item number two and under discussions for another date. And uh, uh, Mark McDonald is going to speak to us a little bit about streetlights, and then we're going to jump right on ahead to uh, uh, Mark Randall and uh, some overtime issues and uh, on down to the main uh, uh, item. And we're going to try to do this quickly because, again, we have several members who are leaving, and this is a special meeting, so uh, we'd want to have a quorum, but we maybe get slim here in a little bit. Okay, so, uh, Mark? Okay. Um, there we go. New seating arrangement. This is different. Um <laughs> it's about the street. Uh, I requested information about the street light charges annually and how they were determined. And then um, we have a decision from the city that we're not going to pay for electricity associated with street light. Uh, street light. And I, I feel that at this point, um, I see that as a charter violation of 3.17, and that uh, we also have an issue with. We're supporting city functions through um, the enterprises that we currently have. I, I think it would be um, it'd be interesting to find out what if Blue Springs pays for their street lights, if Lee Summit pays for their street light, the electricity that goes into the street lights, um, maybe even Kansas City to see if they pay for their electricity that goes into the street light, because the charter. And hopefully someone has read the charter that um, strongly restricts us from using um, IPL or the water department or WPC to support functions of the city. So I guess um, my question would be, and hopefully Sarah is going to fill us in on what legal presence we've had, because I, when did we start paying for the electricity and in the street lights, and once we determined we were paying for street uh, electricity in the street lights before, what changed that says that it should not be a city function to provide the electricity for the street lights, and now let IPL go ahead and pay for the street lights, in addition to going ahead and paying for all the conversion from um, the sulfur or whatever kind of mercury lights they were before, and did the whole LED project on the back of IPL, especially when we're trying to reduce rates for our rate payers. It seems like it's a double uh, dip that on the bottom side, we can add costs to IPL and still collect the uh, franchise fees for gross sales. So you're basically doubling up on um, what we're doing with IPL. So any comments? Well, the only thing I would uh, say is that uh, the city manager felt like this is a defensible, uh, justifiable change. And uh, but knowing that you wanted to know more about that, I've asked the city attorney's office to come up with a legal opinion on it. Uh, and uh, they don't have that for you today. But just uh, but Sarah is here. She can tell you a little bit about uh, maybe uh, when that might come or maybe frame the issue a little bit or something like that. So I don't know. Sarah, do you have any? Thing are to we, add at this time? Are we putting you on the spot, Sarah? A little bit. If we don't need, we don't, if you feel like you're being put, I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Well, it's just, just simply, I just want to know 
Yeah. What basis <laughs> well, we utilize? Can I yeah. finish? Oh, good. What basis did we utilize to determine that we weren't going to pay for the electric? That city wasn't going to pay for the electricity for the streetlights, and and that's really a, because it's confusing in the charter, and it looks like it's a charter violation for my stupid eyes. So I was just wondering if at some point, because you know we asked some of these questions um, over a year ago, and we're trying to get them all corrected it's not that i'm in a mad ass rush to get everything answered but just ignoring them does not get them addressed well, you know what i gave you that's going to be my blueprint for each month i'd like to add another thing so that we can get them addressed so sir if you feel like that you're being um, put upon and i don't mean put up on our caught off guard we can cancel this and move on to the next meeting this question came to me about Shannon and I about six o'clock last night. About what I'm time? Pretty loud. Yeah, I, I got this uh, question posed to the lot of o'clock last night. So we're gonna need a little bit more time to formulate that opinion for oh, you. Oh, absolutely. To figure out where you're. I have no problem, but it seems strange to me. I'm just gonna. I got gotcha. you. And it's not you at all, Sarah. No. It's really Mark. Um, <laughs> you know this. This is. This dates back to July. You know, at some point, I would think someone would have said, hey, law department, we need somebody to look into this because um, inquiring minds are wanting to know, we paid for the electricity, I think, maybe, Jack, you could help me, for years. I, I don't know how long we've been paying for the electricity for streetlights. And then we just all determined, well, the city manager decided it's probably a good idea not to pay street. For the electricity well i could personally say it's probably a pretty good idea i stopped paying for my electricity at my house and I, i'm pretty sure i know what the answer with that would be too well i think what i was just wanting to say was is that it isn't ignoring your question which is why we put it on here just to address let you know that while we've ex tried to explain in the past what the city manager's position of it is which is basically that it doesn't say in the charter that it's a, a city uh, general fund responsibility so but knowing that you don't want to take that answer from the city manager's office just want to let you know that we requested them to come up with a uh, legal opinion that they could share with you and so what i just told them was knowing that this might catch her off guard last night i wanted them to know <laughs> that this was going to be on, on, brought up just so that you'll be prepared to talk about it later well, they don't have their legal opinion done now but Jack wants to make a comment. Go ahead, yeah. Jack. <clears throat> Two to three things that you addressed there. First of all, electricity is only part of it. Um, there's an investment in materials, operation, replacement, all those, and the city historically paid both of those. One Does the city pay for it? Historically, they had. Oh, okay. So there's two elements. Electricity would just be a really half of it maybe okay then to answer your question about the other communities kansas city missouri passed a tax specifically for lighting so in essence the residents are paying through their city government for the lighting other communities that you mentioned around here that are that were historically fed by um, what we know as missouri public service company um, actually lease or rent or whatever term you want to put on it from the providing utility. So every one of those lights out there, uh, many different kinds have a different rate and the city pays for it. That's all we were saying was is that, you know, one of our two biggest peer cities, one of them, Springfield, the city does not pay for the street lights. Columbia, the city does. Various municipal owned electric utilities don't pay for it, some do. All we're saying is, is our charter basically is silent on it. The city manager took a position on it, but we appreciate your point of view, your opinion. And so in respect to that, that's why we're asking them to look into it, come up with what the reasoning is, and then hopefully we won't have this constant debate one way or the other, because like I said, you, you, there would be a, we may have a difference of opinion on it, or you and the city manager may have a difference of opinion on it. And so let's just go and have it researched out, and then we can move on. How can, or, yeah. how can a... Uh, judge have an opinion on a matter such as this or specifically this 
and then we just decide that enough days have gone by. We don't want to respect that anymore. I'm not sorry, what? A judge? Bond. Yes. Well, the Bondron decision does not say specifically that it's a general fund responsibility. It doesn't say specifically, but it does point out a definition. Anything used by electrical consumers or needed for electrical consumers. Well, all I'm trying to I'm say is that we're all trying to practice law without a license, and all I've had said is let's go get a lawyer to make the, give us an opinion, and then we can talk about the merits of that. So there's no point of you trying to, to convince me or me convince you at this point because we've done that so many different meetings. Yeah. So let's just say that, oh, we just want to update you basically. And, and not to belittle this lady here, but she's got to support the city manager. The city attorney doesn't have a job is going to support, support the law, so we might ask her to respond to that. Pardon me? It'll okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm old, but my memory is still here. When I first came on this board, that was one of the first things that come up, street lighting. And at that time, Dela was here legally for the law department, and she gave us an opinion and I don't know whether we can go back that far on our minutes but I know she did because I remember it <clears throat> now some people didn't like the opinion but she gave it so if you're I think that's fine that we go to the law department and find out what the law is and what can be done and get it laid to rest I, that's what I, I'm looking forward to because I get tired of coming here and talking about the street lights. My question is, if if the city pays for the lights and we'll say that it's three hundred thousand dollars a year, what is the nine point eight percent franchise tax that the power and light pays back to the city? What's that amount? To me, you're just exchanging money. I mean, the mafia does this by laundering money, you know, and, and all we're doing is, to me, that I don't know what the nine, how, what dollar amount the 9.8 is, but it seems to me we're just exchanging money here. I believe, the, I I believe the investment for putting the new uh, lighting out there was around $4 million. Yeah. I would entertain a motion to table this until we have the opinions that we're looking for. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. My, minor discussion. Yep. Uh, I, I'm just stepping on her toes all the time here. But they're going to be biased because they work for the city, work for the city manager. You need an independent if you're looking for a legal advice. Okay. I think. Well, in, in the uh, green, I agree with, with Jack's comment, uh, but I think also I, it would be well in their legal opinion to go back to that previous court case. Cause, yes, because that does lay out an unbiased opinion in terms of the city's responsibilities versus IPL's responsibility, even though they are a little bit different in terms of I think that, that what we received previously, Larry, was her opinion in terms of what had happened on the in installation of the lights. This is an issue now of paying for the electricity, which is a really a different matter because the electricity was always paid for by the city before. Now it's being paid by IPL. And so that is a whole new issue that we haven't had discussed by the legal uh, department. Okay, then, then what we're doing is asking for an opinion on paying for the electricity? Mm -hmm. Okay. I still made my motion. Sure. Any other comments on the motion? Yes, I've got a comment on this. Uh, how do you determine how much electricity is being used? How do you determine how much electricity is being used on the streetlights? There is a formula. Uh, of course, there's different lights out there, yeah. you know, different sizes. They consume different amounts of electricity. And then there is a, uh, a chart that shows burning hours that's mutually accepted by everyone uh, because they burn longer in the winter, shorter in the summer. So 
that that's how you calculate how many kilowatt hours are used by street lighting. So there's no meter in it? No. Okay. This is just a guess. Further comments on this motion? I call for a vote. All in favor of the motion to table until we get a, an opinion, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, moving on to Mark Randall and your uh, discussion number three. This is another item that you all asked more information about, so we have a presentation for you today. Uh, you asked about overtime at Blue Valley Plant specifically. And so we got a presentation here. Uh, we have Marty Barker and Elaine Kafis with the uh, production division of uh, uh, Power and Light. And they'd like to uh, give you a little uh, report. I think you've got a copy of it at your uh, desk, but I don't know, Marty, are you gonna kick it off or is Elaine gonna do it? I'm delegating. Okay, Elaine's gonna do it. Yeah, I can feel it. Bear with me, I'm not a speech giver. So, and I never used one. Pull your mic over a little closer. They're fancy. There you go. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. We did provide you with um, explanation of where the overtime dollars went for July and August as requested, but in putting that together, I came up with what I thought was interesting information that I thought maybe we should be bragging a little bit on ourselves um, and our kind of journey in being in this market over time. And that's what this is about. So it, SPP started in March of 14. And at the time, they asked us to tell them the parameters that we want to offer our units. And, and this is all about Blue Valley units. So the CTs have been in there under the same parameters pretty much the whole time they can come on within a half an hour and we have a certain number of hours we want to run if they put us on and that sort of thing. But the steam units have been kind of a work in progress. So initially we said, okay, if you put us on, we want to run for five days and we need 12 hour uh, heads up that we want to come on and then we want to run five days. Well, we figured out that that, that wasn't going to be, is 120? Is that five days? I'm saying that off the top of my head. That we weren't getting called very much. Okay, so we thought, well, let's try 72 hours. We started getting called a little bit more, but we didn't really have a chance to, to uh, flesh that out through a summer because in May we decided, okay, now we're not gonna burn coal ever again. And we're gonna have this massive coal pile that we're gonna have to deal with environmentally uh, somehow or you know, take it off site, sell it, whatever. So we decided let's burn it rather than have that expense. So the summer of 15, we self-scheduled, meaning the market didn't ask for us to come on. We said, we're coming on, and we ran all summer to burn out all that coal at Missouri City and Blue Valley, which we were able to do. And then we started burning natural gas. So with natural gas, uh, at some point we saw a presentation that said it looked like when they needed units, like on a moment's notice, moment's notice, they would look at units that had less than a 12 hour start. It looked like we're getting started more often. So we thought, well, we could do 11 and a half and we don't need to be on five days. We think we can be a little less conservative. So we, we tried to say, okay, 48 hours if we're on. And then it just goes on from there. You can kind of see. So now we're at a nine hour start. And if they put us online, we're on for 10 hours now. That doesn't mean they have to take us off in 10 hours. It just means the minimum amount of time they're going to run us is 10 hours. So there's a couple different things that have affected our operation. The unit parameters is what I just talked about. The number of runs have increased. The megawatt hours we produce has increased. Our net revenue has increased because of those changes. We also made <clears throat> excuse me, changes to the operator scheduling parameters that have decreased over time. And of course, we've decreased manpower through attrition. So, but we haven't. Can I ask a question? If you go, yes. You say our net revenue. Mike, I'm sorry. <clears throat> our net, net revenues have increased, even though we've decreased the runtime. Is right. that because? Go ahead, explain what that is. So, these are this is chart is megawatt hours, and. 
this is for, and I say by fiscal year, this is just July and August, okay, for 16, 17, 18, 19. So 16 was, um, we were still required to be on quite a long time if we were on, but we weren't making the revenue because what happens is if you run the 24 hour cycle, you're making decent money in the day and bad money at night because they, the prices just go down at night. It's kind of an incentive for people not to run a disincentive. And so, so your average is going to be lower because you're, you're eating that nighttime cost and all they have to do is pay you the cost that it, the minimum they can pay you is the cost that it costs you to make it. And so when you're running all night and day, your, your net's going to be lower because you're almost just at your cost versus if you come on just to run for the pool and it's during the day when prices are nice and high. And if you have a big price spike, you can make a lot of money just in 20 minutes. Then your, your about a uh, Delta over your fuel costs is going to be a lot better. I'm not sure you're explaining that this revenue is above fuel costs. It's above fuel costs. So when I'm talking about net, that's that's all we're counting as a variable cost is fuel. And that's what they do with ITAN and all of them when they talk about it on this piece of it, revenue. It's not over any carrying charges or capital expenses or anything, labor or any of that. That's just the amount of money we're making that goes in our pocket. It's more than we would have made if we didn't run minus the fuel we had to pay for running, so. Thank you. So that just kind of shows the trend and part of that, like I said, is from running more during the day. <laughs> so this is 2016. You can see we ran rather infrequently. This is from July 1st, to August 31st. And there's some runs in there and you can see the, the base of that is a little bit wide because we would come on, we'd run for two days and come off versus this is this year, July through August, we ran all those times. The base is really not as wide because we're coming on basically in the morning and coming off at night. And I think there's a little gap in there in the middle somewhere at late July, early August, we had a outage we had to take so that the boiler inspector could come in and make sure we're good to run. So otherwise I would have expected we maybe could have been running then as well. So that's that's just something to brag on, I think, because I do think the perception is that we're not running, and we really have been running a lot this year. So um, in addition to that piece changing with the market, uh, in 2016, we made changes on how we fill operator vacancies. So when we first went in the market, another, another learning curve on this we said, okay, we need to be ready anytime in case we're called. So if anybody's off sick, vacation, whatever it is, we're filling that spot, even if we're not running. Well, in 2016, we're like, okay, we're not getting called like we thought we would. And it doesn't make sense. You're, you're paying for the job already. So it's not like you're not paying the operators, but you aren't paying another person to fill if you're not running. And that was that change. Um, but... The combustion turbine, any vacancies were filled by the power plant operator one, and the union actually said, hey, the power plant operator ones are getting all the overtime. We want that to be able to be any operator, so we made that change. Um, so then there's sometimes operators that are on straight time that could do the job, where previously we were having to pay overtime for that group to do it, so that helped. Um, and that's kind of the straight time. When, oh, yeah. So that that next one is kind of a consequence of the fact that we could use any qualified operator. We weren't just having to pay overtime to do it. In December of 17, we had a shift supervisor retire, and <clears throat> we decided not to fill that vacancy. So that's part of the reason their overtime's high. We have a 24-hour schedule, so you always have four crews. One's on days, one's on afternoons, one's on nights, and one's off. And then you had a fifth crew, which is that, they called it a relief person. Uh, if there's vacancies here, you can use that person to fill on straight time. It still doesn't take away all your overtime because if you have four people making 2,080 hours a year, it's still less than 8760. So you have about 400 hours of just built in overtime. But it uh, <clears throat> that's part of the reason the shift supervisor's overtime went up. And then in July, our latest, yeah. 
I obviously don't do this for a living. Our latest schedule, we're not requiring a power plant operator one for Blue Valley operation because we were down to two power plant operator ones. So that was like a constant over time. So we worked it out and the unions actually worked with us really well to try to be flexible through all this because that's what it takes is flexibility when you kind of are starting from scratch and figuring out how to do everything. Yes. Emphasize that since 2012, we have not added any new operators. We have gone from that's true. Where mm -hmm. we're at now. Repeat that statement. <clears throat> yeah, I have to repeat it because. Yeah, since 2012, we haven't added operators. We've just manipulated the schedule and figured out how to be flexible and pivot kind of when when people leave. And now we just had another one that we found out yesterday is retiring. So we're, we're down to like pretty much as low as we could go with Blue Valley running. <clears throat> Again, this is July through August. And you can see our attrition. This is the entire plant. So you can see that our straight time costs, which is that blue line, have gone down. And our overtime costs haven't haven't gone up like you would think, you know, if you're if you're minimizing your your amount of people that your overtime is going to have to go up. But because of those other changes we made, we've kept our overtime pretty, pretty much in check. And in 2017, it was a little better than in 18 because we didn't uh, replace that supervisor that would have helped some of that. And this is the net, and that's all on the same scale. So the overtime expense is the orange bars. And then the net revenue is that line. So in 2016, <clears throat> when we were paying people, in case we came on, you can see that our overtime expense kind of exceeded what we were getting net from the market. So after fuel, and now in 19, it's really... Since we've gone to the 10-hour schedule for the unit to be on, we've, we've uh, ran a lot, <coughs> and our revenue's up nicely. Of course, that is everything. That's all the CTs and Blue Valley. But a bulk of the overtime is due to Blue Valley, so that's why I'm kind of focusing on it. If you don't have to have a 24-7 operation, which I don't think we'll need with the CTs, they typically will run during the day, then, then a lot of that will go away. That's it. So, I, I, my question is, is this just for two months, July yes. and August? So, wh why did you just do two months as opposed to 12 months? Because that's what the request was for the overtime piece. But I have the 12 month numbers. Um, right I, I, I mean, I would presume that <clears throat> your revenues are much higher in July and August than they are for the other 10 months because you're running more in July and August than the other 10 months. Yeah. I mean, you know, it looks like we really made a lot of money right. in the last couple of years, but I really think that we ought to be looking at for a full 12 month period. And that's fine. And I thought that question might come up, so I've got those numbers. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you you had just asked about overtime for July and August. That's why those small oh, months. Oh, well, I, I don't know who asked for it that, that way. That was the answer request. The was asked. We can make a copy of that for everybody. So basically, I don't know if that has to be on, but what this is showing is in 2016 through 17, we made 21,000, but that's on top of all fuel costs and every single bit of overtime including overtime we have to pay on holidays by contract, standby overtime, call-in overtime, all the overtime. The next year we made $900. That was 17 to 18. 18 to 19, 363458 over all of the overtime, every single bit of it. And some of it you're going to pay whether you're running or not. <coughs> like I said, holidays is one kind of a big one. That's why I brought it out as its own thing. So... So that's a sub, obviously a very substantial change, even if you go back to your 16, 17 yeah. baseline from 21, 22,000 to 363,000. Right. Uh, and that's, that's your net revenue of cost, net revenue over your cost. Fuel only, just fuel. Okay. When I say net revenue, it's the variable cost of the fuel we had to burn to run that day. By the mic. Well, so you didn't go ask, ask the question. 
so you didn't get the over did you get the just for clarification that's just <laughs> fuel that doesn't include total expenses right correct okay thank it's you just the the additional cost that you have because you were asked to operate the variable cost is the fuel and that's the same way that that iatan and everybody else does it here's our net over our variable cost so the your other basic costs are your your employee costs, I guess. Right, right. We don't have any capital costs. We don't have any, you know, loans or anything like that. Like you're oh, paying if, with some of these other. If, if you include your employee costs, then you don't show a net income. You're probably showing a net loss. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm sure you would. Yeah. <laughs> and I think any of them would be like that because you're paying for bonds and, you know, dog would probably be like that. So I mean, that's what we've always been saying is that that Moo Valley is costing us money as opposed, you know, the, you know, it's a cost as opposed to yeah, a are. revenue generator. If you if, if you, you look at if you look at the, if you look at all these, it looks like we're actually making money. Well, that's, that's why I wanted to make sure right. what, what this you, is really saying. If you look saying. at your all-in costs, and I have slides that show that too, our dollars per kilowatt month or whatever, we're still lower than some of the other products that we have to to provide electricity for citizens so i don't think did you not get in your packet the overtime figure okay so we, we missed that we'll make copies of that and get that to you because that's sort of what what you asked for was to see what the overtime was we got that report for you for july and august and then she was just trying to make the point that although overtime is high when it is running high, we're actually also making money in those those times. But we're not trying to suggest that uh, it would be we'd save more money by replacing that capacity through the power purchase agreement. We're not saying that. We're just you had asked about why is there overtime on a plant that isn't running was kind of what you'd said. But the point was it is running. But besides that, you still have to be able to show that you're available to be called upon 24/7. So. Um, that's kind of what she was, was trying to say. But you missed one of the big part, which was the uh, the overtime report for July and August, which we'll make copies of that and uh, try to and get that here before the meetings. Uh, uh, I think Dan's probably... How many do you need? He's one, one for all the QAD members. Dan, I'd like one too, please. Yeah, we're in. How are we making it? Yeah, yeah. 20 yeah. Years old. yeah. Um, Any other questions? Any other questions? Well, I want to thank you very much uh, for your presentation. I know that this is out of your bailiwick most of the time. Not thank you very, very much. Yeah, appreciate no it. Okay, uh, moving on down. Mark, your uh, action item. Yes, this is just as part of your role of uh, making recommendations to uh, the city council. And you already had endorsed that uh, the council utility rates committee's uh, recommendation on rate design. You endorsed that last time, but uh, you also, uh, I wanted to let you know that Monday uh, night, the council's gonna uh, consider the resolution, which is, which hopefully you do have a copy of that in your packet, right? Yes. This yeah. resolution. And so uh, before it goes to them, wanted you to see it, uh, if you care to uh, vote to, uh, to support that, it's consistent with what you uh, did last time. It's basically saying uh, that the rate design is going to be uh, hitting those points that are in were in that uh, they're identified in that resolution. All right, Mark, uh, I made the motion, and it was with stipulation that we would have it fine tuned. Do you have it fine tuned at this point? No. We're still working on that. Yeah. Well, then I, I can't support it until I see that. I'm sorry, but that's what I asked for in that motion. If well, yeah. that you can't get before Monday night, and Monday night's when the council wants to uh, endorse the recommendation of this the committee that said this is how they want the rate design to be structured. So then we can go fine tune the the finish the report. In other words, so this is just saying like this is the policy decisions that they want that would govern how the rate design's done. So. Well, all right, then if, if they approve the policy and then you later on fine tune it and we say, 
well, this isn't right or something. How's that? We're not going to be able to change the resolution. Well, well, I think it's, it's going to be done this way. This is the way it'll be done. It's just that it isn't done today as far as uh, here's what the rate is for a particular class. We don't have that, but it will be done according to the way this resolution is written. Okay. I'd like to. Okay, Mark. Um, I I, I wasn't here for that vote that it, it endorsed, but I, I do endorse reducing the number of rates. But I do not, and, and I hope that the city council members will will see this tape or uh, video and say, we've got two different things going on here, if I'm reading it right. Because we've got at the top that uh, the reflect the new 6% rates, 6% uh, rate reduction previously authorized by the council. And I agree with that. But the very next paragraph is totally wrong. I don't know that anyone has demonstrated that we're going to be the lowest rates in the metro area for the vast majority IPL customers. Furthermore, yeah. we're incorporating the average. What we made a commitment to was that every rate payer would get a full 6% reduction. When we do the well, average, let me finish. When we do the average the low users are only getting a, a minute amount of a reduction, whereas the high users are going to get a significant more. That's what that says. And no. maybe I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. Right, I'm trying to. Yeah, no, that's originally we were talking about an average of 6%, but what the council rate subcommittee uh, said was that everyone will keep the 6%. Would everyone. you read the, sec the paragraph, the third whereas? What's it say? Well, it should say 6%. You're right. It shouldn't say average. It should say, uh, if you go down to the... This document is saying whereas, two different things. Yeah, no, I, I guess you're right. It shouldn't say average, but... No, 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 wait, wait. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Okay. The proposed rate design is presented on that night. Did say that it would be an average 6%. That's, so that's correct. But then what I, goes on to say was that the council said they did not want to do the average. They wanted to do it where everyone got at least 6%. So then the rates, council rates subcommittee made that recommendation. PUAB endorsed it. Now they're going to adopt it officially by resolution that it's going to be everyone will get the minimum 6%. The, the whereas you're reading is, is talking about what was proposed in the past. Proposed at the past at that uh, August 12th meeting. Okay. I, I feel better about that. But what I don't feel 100%, just like Larry was indicating, is I'd sure like to see what those rates are going to look like and demonstrate that we're really getting the 6%. I'm not well, saying that anybody's going to try well, and, and not give everybody a 6%, but I think it's critically important for the um, – the integrity and honesty of this board, that if we're endorsing something, we at least know what we're endorsing. Well, rates will come back as an ordinance later when it's all done. But before you write that up, you have to know wh what direction you're going, and that's what this does. This is specifying that we're not doing the average. We're doing the minimum, 6%. And we're doing the other things, as it mentions in that large paragraph there, like the moratorium and all the other things and reducing the classes down to the, the smaller number, uh, same as what was in the Solvo report, as opposed to the 12 that was originally presented. So this is given the direction of how it's going to be done. Then we're going to come back. We'll, be, we'll have to have an ordinance to adopt new rates, but that's going to be later. And Robert, I don't know if you have uh, – you might be able to – have a better idea than I of uh, exactly the timing on that. And, and I, guess the other, I guess, oh, excuse me. I guess the other question is, why are we getting something on the day of a special PUAB meeting versus a regular PUA meeting and giving us some advance notice you, so that... You got the exact same thing at the last meeting. And so all we're doing now is we're formalizing it in a resolution that the council wants to adopt on Monday and here you're getting it in advance. They're really, you, you have, you did get it in advance right after the rates subcommittee made the recommendations. It's on the same day last I, I didn't, I, I, like I said, I, I missed because I was at Disney World. I understand. 
but that shouldn't mean that I don't get the documents that was presented to the PUAB meeting. And I did not receive these. Well, I don't know. I, I apologize if that wasn't sent to you with the with minutes or anything. I really don't know. But, no, uh, I did not. Did it go with the minutes or not? And I, that's what I gave you. Uh, you see that? Yeah. Yeah. But the the reason we didn't have it with the PUAB is because the uh, the electric rates committee made their recommendation at, at the same one o'clock right. that same day. So we um, handed it out at the meeting. So if you didn't receive yours, then that was our error for not making sure you did get a copy of it. No, well, well, I I don't know how everybody else feels, but I kind of feel like we need to the table this. Uh, Topic also, I, I'd like to make a motion to table until the next regular scheduled meeting. Is there a second? Any lack of a second? Are you on a second? Okay, we're going to have a second. Any discussion on this uh, tabling? I have, I have a little bit of just, just questions. Uh, this is a resolution of what actually what we voted on last meeting. Is that correct? So will we or can you guarantee that we will see the final reason, report or ordinance prior to going to city council for vote? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I, I'm still Wandered, I guess, about the 6%. Because when you, when you do the customer charge, that affects different customers in a different way. Some, it will be less than the 6%, and some it will be more than a 6%, just because it's a standard charge against every customer, and every customer has a different kilowatt usage. In the report that that we saw that showed the the impact of the new rate structure, it wasn't it there it was an average six percent, but it wasn't a six percent for every single customer. So, are what are we saying now? Are we saying that the that this is going to be different from the report that that was shown to us previously which was which was an average are we saying that that that, that report is going to be modified so that it will be that that the each individual's rate will be adjusted so that it is a 6% reduction correct okay yeah that's the will of the council they want to make sure that every Right now, every rate has a 6% reduction in it, and they want to make sure that that translates into the new structure. And so it will be not an average, it will be a minimum. They'll, everyone will, will still enjoy that 6% rate reduction. Okay, any further discussion on the motion to table? All in favor say aye. All opposed, same aye. sign. Aye. Tonight, aye. Aye. Okay. Well, then let's show hands. Okay. We 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 approved this last last time, so I don't know why we're. I don't uh, either. No, why we're not approving it this time? It's we basically, approved this right here. Yeah, we approved this last last week last meeting. Okay. But I guess I'm I'm, I'm in the minority. If you want to. No, it's okay. No, you're what? not in the minority. I excuse me. Yeah. I agree. We voted on this last month or last meeting, and Mark, I'm sorry you weren't here, but we it, it was simply a resolute uh, to get the process started is what I want to say, so that we get the final report, so that we know that everybody is getting six percent, and I think that's what the ordinance is going to mm -hmm. be. So. I retract my vote. I'm voting no on a motion. Okay. In any case, three of the members have asked to be relieved at this time and a quarter after, and we will now no longer have a quorum. And so 
we either need to, uh, well, we're gonna, I'm gonna say we don't have a quorum and excuse the members. Thank you very much. We, do we have a vote on the motion? I can wait five more minutes. Do we have a vote on? Well, we reverse votes, so uh, all in favor of tabling, raise your right hand. All in favor of not tabling and taking the resolution as it was uh, on to the city council uh, as per mark, raise your right hand. Three and three. Which way did you vote? I did. I abstained. Yeah. Three and two. Three and two. I'm okay. abstaining. Very good. Then it's uh, move it ahead. So I'll inform the council then that that the PAB endorsed this resolution. And that's the three meeting. to two vote. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah. I, I got one comment too before we leave. Uh, I want to thank the water department and uh, power and light at the power plant. We went on a little tour of both places. Uh, the water company it was just terrific. I, as a citizen, I use that water. I take it for granted just like everything else. But to see it actually working is great. And I think if all the citizens would see what, what a wonderful job you guys do, you know, it'd be a little different. Same with electric, of course. But I'm biased to the electric side. So, just because you mentioned that, we took 1,200 fifth graders through there in the last two weeks that toured the plant. So it was a great deal. And uh, I think a lot of the students benefited from learning about the water cycle and the water plant. So it was timely on your part to go at the same time with all those kids. <laughs> it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. It seems to me in our last meeting, that we weren't given the information regarding this rate change in enough lead time to make an intelligent decision last meeting. Therefore, we said, let's have a study session. Now, the study session goes right straight into endorsement. And we and, and it's right here in the resolution. I, I, I don't think we accomplished what we intended to accomplish. Okay. Okay, we're adjourned. Thanks.